So the brand new battle pass for Operation Deadly Omen includes a really nice bundle for Rook. This is personally one of my favorite ones he's ever received. Now the headgear is really nice. It's Rook without any equipment on, something we've never seen before with him. We have seen his face with his elite headgear, that isn't really new, but him without any helmet or a mask on is something we haven't seen before. And personally, those are my favorite types of headgear since they easily can be mixed and matched with every single uniform just because they suit all of them. The uniform as well is pretty cool spin on his default look. It's much more dirtied up, there's blood all over him, and a major thing you can see is that there is a lot of bullet damage to his armor plates. And what I like most about this uniform is this highlights how important Rook was for the year 9 cinematic, and pretty much how Rook and his armor were a major reason in them successfully taking down Deimos, and how it took Deimos by surprise. And a lot of this you may have missed so I am going to explain it all. So if you enjoyed this video be sure to drop it a like, drop a comment since it does help with the algorithm, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And without further ado, let's get into this. So let's jump all the way back to the beginning of the year 8 cinematic where Deimos is first revealed and he has his confrontation with Harry. And a big theory I've seen from a lot of people after the cinematic is that Harry was actually wearing Rook's armor plates and there was a chance that he was still alive. Which was wasn't really a theory I indulged in because I'm pretty sure it was obvious he was dead, but it's also not a massively far-fetched theory. So roughly six months after this took place, Deimos would perpetrate an attack on a rainbow training facility in South Korea, which we all know to be known as the Map Tower. This is where Vigil was training a bunch of new rainbow recruits, including one we will go on to know as Ram. Many recruits were lost in this attack, and Vigil and Ram seemed to be the only survivors. Vigil and Ram would then make their way to the bottom of the tower, where they were met with more members of the Kira's Legion. This assault was not finished. Now, after an engagement between the two sides, Vigil and Ram do successfully neutralize them. And a major thing which they got out of this was not only the black box from the helicopter, which would eventually lead them to Lair in Portugal, but also a lot of the ordnance used in this attack. Rainbow would retrieve a lot of the bullets and weapons in which the Kira's Legion were using. And this is then when we would cut to six days later at Viper Strikes headquarters. And it's at this headquarters where we see Solace, Mira, and Rook. Mira being the head of R&D at Rainbow, she's basically responsible for developing a lot of the operator's gadgets, is testing these weapons in which they have recovered on a testing dummy wearing some of Rook's armor plates. And one thing they know is that these bullets went straight through the armor plates like a hot knife through butter. And that is when Rook says, even with a vest, Harry wouldn't have survived sort of shutting down that theory that Harry survived that confrontation. But this is also more important in the grand scheme of things, because this means that Deimos and the Kira's Legion have weapons that can penetrate Rook's armor. And this is also six months away from the confrontation which happens at Emerald Plains, so from the looks of it, Mira and Rook get to work. Because the next time we see them is in the comic book for Operation Deep Freeze. They are on Hereford base along alongside Wolfguard leader Doc. Now, as far as I'm aware, it's not really been established where Viper Strikes base is. I believe Hereford base is still like a unified rainbow base, the same way the stadium is. And then each of the squads have their own location or they all have separate locations in like Hereford base or something like that. They've not really explained that yet. But what we do know is by this time, it seems like Rook's armor has had an upgrade. Because when we get into the year nine cinematic with the attack on Emerald Plains, the first thing we see Rook do is place down his armor when they're fortifying the room to protect the secretary general. And one thing which I think is a little Easter egg and something to make note is that Rook's armor pack here is his elite one, which might be a bit of a hint showing that this is an upgrade of of his standard armor pack. I mean, elite gadget skins have never really been a thing that's been linked to lore, so this would be quite an interesting way of them showing that his armor is a bit different, or this is a different set of armor, and he still has the other armor, which is the one in his 
original default looking pack, but I definitely think that is an interesting detail and was done on purpose. So as you're all probably aware, the QS Legion members enter the building. They are taken out by a Nitro Cell, which is placed by Mira, but Deimos does manage to make his way in. Now, Mira does end up getting shot in the chest and Doc does get shot in the head. However, it seems like it just grazes his face slightly since if we look at his battle pass headgear, which is set after this, he has some stitches there and you can see on the ballistic glass on the helmet that it did go through the side of it, but it seems like it did sort of neutralize Mira and Doc for the time being, leaving only Rook, who does get shot in the chest by Deimos. Now, as far as Deimos is aware, that should be Rook down, and he was probably thinking the same for Mira and Doc. He knows how strong his weaponry is, and that it can penetrate Rainbow's armor. I mean, he even says after it that Rainbow operators used to be harder to kill in his time, implying that he's pretty sure he killed them, and this is also referencing the fact that we will later go on to learn that he killed Daniel Bogart back in 2012. So, Sam Fisher then comes down from the ceiling and does his badass thing, which I'm so happy they done. But that is when Deimos starts to get a little bit of an upper hand. I mean, for all the people to put Sam Fisher in a headlock, Gerald Morris makes sense. He's an original Rainbow operator. These are two very elite soldiers, and it actually looks like Sam managed to just escape him near the end anyway. But that is when Rook steps in and shoots Deimos in the head, knocking him to the floor and also surprising Sam a bit. But this plays into what Rook would do, all the way back at his very original intro cinematic when Rainbow Six Siege first came out. A very famous line by Rook is that he trusts his teammates and his teammates trust him. So he trusts that he was able to take that shot without hitting Sam. So Rook being able to take Deimos by surprise and take him down is what led them to winning this. Deimos went into this confrontation believing that he had the weaponry and ordinance to penetrate Rainbow's armor. And that is why when he shot Rook, for example, he assumed that Rook was down. But obviously that was not the case. And that just goes to show you that Mirror and Rook's discovery that the Kira's Legion has ordinance that can penetrate Rook's armor would then come back to benefit them as over this time, it seems like they reinforced Rook's armor, made it stronger, tested it out against this ordinance that they were using, which would eventually lead Deimos to this false sense of security after shooting Rook, believing him to be dead. Another thing to sort of support this as well is that in the Operation Deep Freeze Battle Pass, Mirror says the following, I'm doing my best to keep our gear cutting edge. I hate to admit it, but having Osa here would get better results. I could use her vision. So less about the part of her wanting, you know, Nighthaven and Osa's help, but more about the part that she's doing her best to keep the gear cutting edge. And it definitely seems like Rook's armor was one of the things that she was majorly working on and eventually led to this victory at Emerald Plains. And of course, we know another piece of gear which she is keeping cutting edge and is working on is the rework for Blackbeard, which I'm going to make another entire dedicated video about. But it's really cool to learn that Mirror is still heavily involved in this and it is having big impacts in the lore. Now, I don't think they're going to change Rook in game, I think Rook is in a perfect state in game. I don't think he needs any changes, but I sort of now have this little head cannon of mine that the elite Rook armor pack in game is sort of like a more reinforced armor, which was used to defeat Deimos. But yes, that is how Rook and his armor basically defeated Deimos in Rainbow Six lore. So the next time you look at this battle pass bundle for Rook, you now know the story behind it and how important those bullet marks in his armor plates are. So be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this video. I think it's really nice to see Rook in the lore. He's an operator who's kind of been on the sidelines for a while and hopefully we do get to see more operators over year nine sort of take the main stage, especially since we're getting less major new characters this year. I would like to see operators such as Mute get some focus, Jaeger. That would be really nice nice to see. But yep, yeah, be sure to let me know your thoughts. Check out my other R6 lore videos and other Rainbow Six content and have an incredible rest of your day. I love you all. Stay safe. Peace.